animals went in two by two, hurrah. Sure, the animals went in two by two, but where did they get off? A question that's vexed us for centuries. Bible scholars say somewhere out here in eastern Turkey, Mount Ararat has long been the favoured theory. Now a group of Turkish scientists and NOAA fans, evangelical Christians from Hong Kong, claim they found chunks of his eponymous ark. Wooden chambers still intact, up here two and a half miles above sea level. Hang on, is that straw? The wood carbon dates to around the time Noah was afloat. We are sure, said this Turkish egghead, these parts belong to the ship of Noah. Skeptics are, as usual, skeptical. But for those who believe in the Bible literally, Noah's Ark is a major plank. In 2006, very close to this latest alleged discovery, American Christian archaeologists found a rock formation they say resembles the Ark. This is the best Ark reconstruction I've ever seen, built by a Dutchman. Why are you doing this? To tell the people in Holland that uh, the Bible is true. The flood, according to Genesis, was God's way of destroying a world that had grown wicked and corrupt. Noah, played by John Voight in the Hallmark movie, was charged by God with saving the animals. After months afloat, so they say, the ark came to rest on a mountaintop. This mountaintop? Mystery inevitably remains. The Chinese Christians who claim to have solved this riddle won't say exactly where they found the remnants. For Good Morning America, Nick Watt, ABC News, London. Nick was perfect for that story, wasn't he? <laughs> Joining us now to dig into these purported discovery is Dr. Eric Klein from George Washington University. Dr. Klein, thank you very much for joining us. So, so let's, for the moment, let's just set aside the probability that this is indeed Noah's Ark. How do you go about determining, verifying what the explorers claim they have discovered? Well, it's an excellent question. And I'm not quite 99.9% .9 sure they've <laughs> got Noah's Ark, but they've got something. I mean, they've got something that's wood. It looks like a hut. It looks like uh, something. We just don't know how old it is. I would want to, first of all, try and figure out uh, their data, verify it. Uh, where'd they get the carbon-14 dates done? Can we get another laboratory to do the same thing and verify that the, that the wood really is 4,800 years mm -hmm. old? I'd also want to get independent archaeologists and geologists in there to make sure that this isn't, this isn't just, say, a, a shepherd's hut. You know, usually when people make these claims, and we've been seeing these claims every couple of years for the last century or more, it turns out to be a rock or a shadow or, or something like that. Right. Uh, the difference here is these guys are producing much more evidence than these archaeologists, as we call them, usually put forward. So, but I would want to basically parachute in a whole another team of archaeologists <laughs> to verify their claims. I'm sure that you would. They, they claim that it was found buried in a glacier, uh, buried in a rock and ice like that. I mean, if that indeed is the case, would that help preserve? They say that there are pens that could possibly be, have been for animals. Could that help preserve the wood? Well, it's possible. I mean, Utsi the Iceman was found in the early 90s, and he dates back about 5,200 years. And you've got, you know, woolly mammoths showing up every so often. Yes, it's conceivable something could be preserved in the ice. But in terms of Noah's Ark, I would have suspected it would actually have perished long ago. I mean, the wood should have just disintegrated. But also, even if it, uh, even if it did land on top of the mountains, I would think that the first thing we'd do is take the boat apart and make a building. I mean, wood's <laughs> going to be scarce. So instead of looking for Noah's Ark, I'd be looking for Noah's first house or something like that. Uh, well put, Dr. Klein. So let me, let me I'm just going to go out on a limb here. You're not buying this, are you? You think it's well, more hoax than reality? Let's just say I'm skeptical. Uh, I've got an open mind. I'm waiting for them to uh, convince me. But we've seen this so often before, and it's turned out to be nothing. Uh, but who knows? Stranger things have happened. No, the story is just something that has it's just captivated so many people. And as you said, over the years, we've heard uh, these various claims. What, what do you think it is about the story that just uh, we're, we're enthralled with it? We are. Um, People have been trying to find Noah's Ark and the Ark of the Covenant and the Ten Lost Tribes for, for years now. And I think, in a way, it's because they're trying to verify the Bible. If you can find a piece of Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. then the Ark must be real, then the flood must be real, then the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament are real. I mean, you can make it go uh, upon, you know, layer upon layer. So I think people are looking to verify their faith, basically. 
But that's not what biblical archaeology does. We're not out to prove or disprove the Bible, not the real active biblical archaeologist. It's these archaeologists with an ARK that are out to try and see if the flood happened or if the, if the ark can be found. I love archaeology. A R K. You nailed it, Dr. Klein. Thank you. That's what we hey, call if you them. if you parachute in, save a parachute for us. We'd love to go with you, <laughs> and see what this to. is all about. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, have a good day, Dr. Klein. Thank you very much for your perspective and insight and your humor. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. All I right. appreciate it. Yep. We want to know what you think. So tell us at our shout out board at abcnews.com.